The Remainder Conjecture Driving Science to the Brink of an Epistemological Cul-de-Sac I should say right from the outset that I favor a decidedly physicalist approach to the study of consciousness, and that I think those on a spiritual path are better served than they might at first suspect by those championing intertheoretic reductionism, even if such a narrow focus will not resolve the hard question of qualia and why we have self-reflective awareness. In this regard, I am advocating what I call the remainder conjecture, which stresses that we exhaust any and all physical explanations first before succumbing to what Paul Kurtz called the transcendental temptation, where we prematurely jump ship and opt for super-mundane explanations for erstwhile mundane events. This, of course, doesn't mean that there cannot be something that transcends our rational understandings, but only that the best way to show evidence for it is to make sure that physics, chemistry, and biology are insufficient to the task. Far too often in our rush for the transcendental, we accept anecdotes and claims that, given enough careful study and time, don't pass critical scrutiny. In other words, if something is genuinely beyond science's reach, it will invariably show up as a remainder. But if we are not skeptical enough, we can easily be duped and mistakenly confuse a sleight-of-hand magician's trick as a miracle. My own hunch is that the most fruitful avenue for the scientific study of awareness is to fully exhaust a physical explanation of it first. This does not mean, of course, that such an endeavor will be successful or that consciousness is merely the result of a neural net, but only that if our efforts fail, we will be left with a most interesting remainder which in itself will be highly instructive about the nature of awareness. More precisely, unless we fully option a materialist approach, we run the very real risk of prematurely optioning something as spiritual when, in fact, given better instrumentation and technical prowess, it may well have been the result of subtle neuronal discharges. The good news in advocating this consilient approach is that if our self-reflective consciousness is ultimately non-physical, then our science will end up driving itself to the very brink of an epistemological cul-de-sac and in the process reveal that which cannot be explained away. The materialist agenda, I suggest, should be fully embraced by those most engaged in a spiritual quest since it is, ironically, the surest pathway to discover that which is immune to our rationalist inspections.